I remember one of the most profound things that my mother ever shared with me. And there's a saying in Chinese that the worst thing that one can ever go through is seeing, outliving your own children. How, how, do, you ex how do you expect people around you to behave? How do you want them to behave versus how are they behaving? Can we talk about that? Sure. I guess since the beginning, I've wanted people to just honor where I'm at. Um, most people don't understand. This is a very lonely road. Uh, most people don't understand what it's like. And I, f I feel like if you have a friend or someone in that situation, you really need to just honor where they are because <laughs> It's like so, everyone says to me, it's so unfathomable. And I'm like, yeah, it is. Um, but I think just being there and showing up, listening, and under, trying, to, trying to get a glimpse of what I'm going through is really important. Where some people ignore you because they feel like you have an illness or something and they don't want to catch it. <laughs> um, so I think just being present is really important. So, I mean, just to be completely vulnerable, mm -hmm. you know, I, working with you, I, I have a sense of guilt when I, when my children are sitting here in the front row. Um, Are there words that you can share with me in terms of how can I not support you, but just be with you without that, that sense of, of, of guilt? And like, you know, I, to be honest, I, I, I don't want to talk about my kids in front of you, right? Oh, yeah, I don't. <laughs> right. I don't ever want anybody to feel that way, though, yeah. you know, because I feel like children are a blessing to us. Right. They really are, and my son was a gift to me, even though I had him for almost six years. I mean, he was, he was a blessing, and we're given blessings from God. We're given them, and um, it, was, it was Jack's time to leave this earth, and I believe that, and... You never know. You never know what anybody's future is going to hold. I mean, at all. But don't don't feel guilty, I guess, or don't feel like I, it doesn't bother me. In the beginning, let me tell you, it does bother you when everybody's talking about their kids, or especially complaining about their children, and then you're like, oh my gosh, mine's not even here. Like, you know. This is a real issue, not your little complaint. <laughs> but um, now, in time, I find joy in seeing other children, actually. And not everybody as a bereaved parent would say that. But I look at other children as a blessing to their parent. And I know what Jack did for me. Mm. And I'm not going to you know, take that away from another parent because I wouldn't put anybody else in, this, in these shoes. Can you tell me what your lowest point was? Yeah, so a year ago, a little over a year ago, um, I hit rock bottom. And I, I was done with, uh, friends of ours had also lost a child. And a lot of PTSD came back, and I felt like Jack died all over again. And I was done being sad. There was a, I always had a little hope, always hope since he died. And when this happened to our friends, it like totally took me down. And so I personally 
checked into a psychiatric place, not because I was going to commit suicide, just because I was done with dealing with everyone and the sadness, and I wanted to help myself. So that was probably my lowest point, I would have to say, um, which was a little over a year ago. If you had to, in one sentence, define your mission in life now, what would it be? My mission is to take the gap in my heart and fill it with love and peace, light and joy, and to help other people that are hurting. And your three words, your meaning of life, what are they? Open your eyes. Open your eyes. Because, you know, we all live in the routine. And you never know. You need to be present. Be present with everything. And just open your eyes. Open your eyes to the possibility. You know, possibility, like even for me now, I still keep my eyes open for my daughter. I mean, I just, I know it's important for people, and I try to tell people that all the time to, like, just be present. Be present in other people's lives that you love. So you may not have an answer for this, and I think everybody is seeking one, is, you know, we go through mind, mindfulness and meditation and being present and aware, um, but yet life happens, right? Mm -hmm. And we just go about our regular mm -hmm. mundane day, um, which I'm sure for you is different, but for, for somebody that hasn't gone through this type of trauma, what, what, what are some of the things that we can maybe take with us that allows us to appreciate and open our eyes more? I think having gratitude uh, for what you have, you know, maybe your life is busy, but you can still like take a moment to even think in your head, like this is what I'm grateful for. And that's helped me a lot in my healing too, is just have, find that gratitude for the things that you have. Um, and also just be centered. I think a lot of mine is just being grounded and centered. And like when you get in the overwhelm and you're busy, 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 just to take some time to just like be by yourself, even if it's five minutes, you know, even if it's just two minutes in the bathroom, you know, whatever it is, just kind of just take a moment and just um, find things to be grateful for because anything can be taken away from you at any time. I want to personally thank you for opening up your heart, for sharing, and being an impact to all of us. Thank you. Yeah.